Hi folks, Philip Andrews here from the Photoshop Elements team and this time around we're going to be looking at how to print easily from the Organizer workspace. Now in Photoshop Elements 9 we changed the way in which you could print from the Organizer workspace and it's a lot easier now. Let me just select a few of these images that I've got sitting here in the Organizer and then just go straight across to Create and down to Photo Prints. And you'll notice that we have a range of options here. We can print with the local printer. That's the printer that's sitting on your desktop. Print a print package, a contact sheet, and both of those options are also with your local printer. And then we've got a couple of options for printing with an online provider. Now, depending on where you are in the world, you might have one, two, three different options here. It just depends on what online providers are linked in with elements in your geographic location. Let's start off by having those items selected in the organizer space, then going straight across to print with local printer. And one thing that you'll immediately notice is that we've got a new print dialog. On the left hand side we have the thumbnails of all the images that we selected in the organizer workspace. On the right hand side we have all the printer settings. And in the middle we have a preview of what you're about to print. Now, it's no coincidence that the Adobe guys have actually numbered all of the print settings from 1 to 5 because they want you to work from the top of the settings down to the bottom. So we select the printer first, then we go in and change any printer settings that we need to change. There's a summary of what settings are already recorded in the printer, but you can go and change those if you want. For instance, we might want to change to photo paper, might want to increase the quality of our printing but still keep on A4 size paper. We can go ahead and select a different paper type. If we didn't do it in the previous setting, we can do it here. And now we can select the type of prints. Notice the different print options that we have here. Individual print, contact sheet, and picture package. Sound familiar? It should do, because those were the options that were available in the Create pane back when we started. So you can select these different types of prints here, or when you're first starting the process. So let's stick with individual prints. Now we get to choose the size of the print. So here we're talking about how big the print is sitting on the actual page. So at the moment, it's 102 millimeters by 152 millimeters. But if we click on actual size, you'll notice that we end up with one image per page. We can see how other images sit on their page by just clicking through using the forward and back buttons on the bottom of the preview space that you can see here. If we want to, we can actually change how the image is sitting within the space using these controls. If we want to make the print smaller on the page, we can do so using these controls as well. We can choose to rotate an image within the frame using these different buttons that we have here. And we can choose to crop to fit the image using this control here. So I'm going to go back to actual size and go back to our starting image. So that's individual prints. We can move through now to contact sheet. Now contact sheet is an old darkroom term when we used to print all of the images from our negatives onto a single sheet of paper and use it as a reference. So you can see here we've got a load of small thumbnails of all of the selected images. We can choose to crop to fit those thumbnails or have them in the format that they were selected, so vertical or horizontal. We also get to choose how many columns of thumbnails we work with. So the higher the number of columns, the smaller the images. The less columns, the larger the images are. There's also a range of print options that we can include. We can include the date that was recorded with the image, any captions that are recorded with that image as well, and the file names so that you can reference them again later. Very handy way to provide a reference sheet to a set of images. Now if we go down to print package, this is slightly different. Again, it's about multiple images on a page, but with a print package, you see we've got some extra options here. We have the ability to choose a different layout. So here we have two images sitting on an A4, and they're 127 millimeters by 178 millimeters. But if we go to the next layout down, we have 10 images, because we've only selected six. Only six of those images are showing up. 
but if we go and click on fill page with first photo you'll see all 10 images sitting there. Now this provides us with a range of layouts for the actual page size that we're working with. If we select a different paper size well then we'll get a different range of options. So for instance letter has a lot more options than A4 and we can turn off fill page with first photo and get the other photos that you see there. As well as being able to select the layout we can also choose from different types of frames. So an antique rectangular frame or a ladybug's frame or a rose garden frame providing you with a variety of different ways of framing the images that you're going to print. So those options in themselves are great new ways for you to print straight from the organizer. Don't forget we still have things like the page setup which you'll recognize from previous versions of Photoshop Elements which you can access from this button at the bottom of the page or more options which do things like allow you to change the color space that you're going to be printing with. So they're more sophisticated options for you to work with. I'm going to cancel out now and I'm going to go back to photo prints and then this time I'm going to select order prints from Shutterfly. Now again I repeat you might not have these specific options available in your geographic territory it just depends on which companies are linked with elements. So the images will be prepared and then you'll see a login screen for the online provider that you've selected. Now with all the online providers you'll need to register first once you've registered then you can simply log in here and your images will be uploaded to the website where they'll be printed and then sent back to you in the mail. It's a great way to print. And finally what we're going to do is look at another print option that we have. Here we have a greeting card that we created earlier so it's a Photoshop Elements project. I'm going to right click on that greeting card and go down to print and immediately that project will open up inside Photoshop Elements editor space. Once it's opened in the editor space we'll also get a print dialog and you'll notice that the print dialog is very much the same as what we've been working with from the organizer. We have thumbnails over on the left which represent the cover and the two inside pages. We have the ability to make adjustments to the image down the bottom here and how it sits on the page and we have the print settings on the right hand side. Now I remember when we created this greetings card that it was actually a 5 by 7 inch greetings card. Now because our paper size is actually A4, well then you'll see that we've got a margin sitting around the edge because A4 is larger than 5 by 7. If you want to print on exactly the same page size as what the photo project was created for, then we need to go and choose 5 by 7. And you'll notice by simply doing that, the image will now be the correct size for the paper. You might also need to change the actual print size. Remember, we have paper size and we have print size. And make sure that it's set to actual size, which is 5 by 7 in this instance. So using this new print dialog, we're able to print not just images from the organizer space, not just images from the editor space, but also photo projects as well.